Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we are going to talk about making mistakes. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I shot a promo for a radio station here in Barcelona. And I made a mistake that I haven't made before. Um, on the day of the shooting, they made a lot of changes that weren't in the script and I was trying to figure out what was going on. I had too much on my plate and I accidentally set the frame rate to 30 frames a second as our output was going to be YouTube, Facebook, etc. And we were working in an office environment with office lights running in Europe, which run on a PAL standard of 50, 50 hertz, 50 cycles a second. So obviously 30 and 50 are not divisible. Therefore, that's going to introduce flicker into our footage. I'm going to go ahead and play the six second clip that, that uh, we shot that day. And if you look right here in this area on the wall, you're going to see the, f the flicker the most. So I'll go ahead and play it for a second. I mean, you can see it in the whole shot, but it's definitely very obvious right there. So, so the, you know, there's a few ways that you can try to remove Flickr. There's a free way. You can actually duplicate the, your footage here, put it on top, offset it by one frame, change the blend mode to the top from the, on the top clip to darken, and then drop the opacity to 50%. That didn't work on this footage. And reshooting this office stuff was not an option. So I did a little research online. I found a plugin by Digital Anarchy. Digital, Digital Anarchy creates has created a plugin called Flickr Free. It was originally designed to remove Flickr from uh, time lapse footage because time lapse footage obviously can have changes in exposure on a frame by frame basis. Although after they created the plugin, it turned out that it had more uses for restoring old footage for running frame rates and shutter speeds that don't match <laughs> your current environment and lighting situation, um, et cetera. So I bought the plugin. It's not cheap, it's 150 bucks, but it works some magic. It is highly processor intensive. So I won't be able to show you in real time. Like when I apply it right here, for example, I can't even, you notice like there is a delay between it lags between changing frames. I mean, if I was to push play, it wouldn't play. It would drop frames like crazy. So instead of uh, applying it, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. In the top, there's presets. These are just starting points. Um, so if you're working in time lapse, slow motion, you have roll, rolling bands, etc. If you're working with a situation like I talked about where you set the frame rate off, then stage lights work for me as a good starting point. Next, you have sensitivity. Sensitivity is, um, it, it, it depends on how much flicker is in your footage. They say to set this between five and 30. I have uh, two renders, one with it set at five, one with it set at 30. So you can see maybe if there's a little bit difference, there's not really a big difference here. Time radius is how many frames before and after the current frame it should search for changes in exposure. Now this setting, if you bump it up higher to let's say for example of a 10 value, if your computer does not have a memory, your host application can run out of memory while trying to, to keep track of so many frames through the render that it could crash. So start at five, if you don't get good results, you can always bump it up. Um, mind you, this six second clip right here, rendering it, regardless of the settings that I chose, took between five and 10 minutes each time. So this thing is quite processor intensive. You would probably want to render your clips and then re-import them into, into to your NLE to use them. Um, next, the all channel setting is probably not worth talking about because Digital Anarchy says that they're probably going to take it out of future versions as turning it off significantly decreases the quality of the render um, and only bumps up the speed of the render very minutely. So yeah, leave it on. Next is your threshold. Threshold is... Is, is determining if there's a lot of, if there's a big change in exposure value on a per pixel basis, this is where you would change that. You'd bump it up if there were much more dramatic differences in contrast. I left it at the default value and really the two things that I played with which are important to note are detect motion because this subject moves. If I play this right here, if I drag my playhead right here, you'll notice, I'm gonna turn off snapping, You'll notice that she leans forward and leans back, etc. Um, what will happen is if you have detect motion off and I have a render of this, you'll notice that there's ghosting. And maybe that could actually create a cool effect. So if you were going for some like 
weird effect, although there's easier ways to produce that effect and probably would take less time as this plugin is seriously processor intensive. Mixes, if you want to you take the original footage along with the flickered uh, rendered stuff and mix it together. However, I don't imagine dropping the mix from 100, but you could. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and I will show you. Let's see. I will show you first without detect motion. So I'm playing here. Watch her body. You see that there's ghosting as she moves back or as she reaches for things. The next one I'm going to show you is just by adding detect motion, having the defaults of stage light with detect motion on. Look at that. You don't even see the flicker anymore, right? The quality is fairly great. Don't even really have to bump it up. Now, changing sensitivity to from 5 to 30 with detect motion on, this is what it looks like. Now, the difference between that and the setting of five did not seem very visible to me. And this stuff hasn't even been graded. And I haven't even applied a denoiser to this footage. So it seemed like the defaults and then turning detect motion on worked best for me and was quite a lifesaver because the footage was usable after the fact. Anyways, guys, I hope that you found this uh, tutorial informative. And if you run into a problem with setting your frame rate or your... your um, shutter speed to a different setting that's not divisible by your 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 the lighting situation that you have or you're using time lapse footage slow motion or you have rolling band situation go ahead and give uh, flicker free a try hope you like uh, <laughs> God, i'm full of like all kinds of uh, tongue twisters right now i hope you like this video guys until next time i'm out